Spike was going to hit some of the vampire hangouts, see if he could get a line on Kakistos. And then there was Sid. Sid? The dummy? You remember. How could you forget? Looks like Kakistos isn't the only dead guy up and walking around. And Kakistos was being all cryptic. No pun intended. But he kept making comments that make me think there's more going on here. I've got a few theories, but they require more research. Sid seemed to know something about it, but he was all mysterious, too. I hate that in a wooden puppet. Yes, we all do. So, you said you had theories? Let's hear them. <laughs> Giles just doesn't want to tell you that his big theory, actually, my theory. Well, I'm sure you haven't forgotten the visit we had from Willow's vampiric doppelganger. We owe that wonderful brush with alternate dimensions to Anya. Yay me! <laughs> you know, if I hadn't brought evil skanky vampire Willow into this dimension by accident, we would all be completely lost in this conversation right now. So, what then? We're dealing with alternate dimension Kakistos? Yeah, our research certainly turned out plenty of precedent for dimensional bleed. Tara, are you alright? What's happened? The old factory? Morphed into a big old vampire blood factory, human cattle, all kinds of fun stuff. And in the middle of it all, Ethan Rain and a bunch of Bakimono. Ethan? What does that oily little snake have to do with this? I got the impression he had nothing to do with the factory changing. As for Ethan himself, I, I got the feeling he was testing me, but I don't have the first clue why. Maybe it's an alternate reality version of Ethan. I'm getting Tara to a doctor. Yes, I think that's wise. There's nothing more to be done this evening. I think we could all do with some rest at this point. Let's meet back here in the morning and we'll start a search for Ethan. See if we can't force these puzzle pieces together. Agreed. I just need to fill one last mail order. You go ahead. I'll wait and walk you home. I don't think any of us should be alone right now. All right. I'll just be a moment. I'm not going anywhere. Hello again, Slayer. Just a quick visit to satisfy my curiosity. I've been wondering, you see, how well you would function without your Watcher. Talking about Hook Boy. Giles is fine. He's in the basement. <laughs> yes. And he isn't alone. When 
one of Giles' magic books. Don't feel like carrying this around. Just what I need for all those nicks and scrapes. And, you know, mortal wounds. the strangest things wandering around this place. Hmm, fancy meeting me here. <laughs> some of that. Pieces of demon lying around. No thanks. Little pigs, little pigs. Ah, never mind. I'll find another way. Oh! <laughs> 
leave the shop. I need to rescue Giles. Ouch! Hot potato. Always wonder what the blood of a slayer would taste like. Looks like I'm gonna get my chance. <laughs> what I need for all those nicks and scrapes, and, you know, mortal wounds. These were once used for digging holes. Did they ruffle your tweed? A bit worse for the wear, but I'll survive. Thanks to the security cage. Remember when I said you were paranoid for wanting to lock away the priceless occult goodies? I meant it. But here's a big yay for your paranoia. Oh, I nearly didn't make it into the cage in time. It took some powerful magic to bring those gargoyles to life. So now what? These stone uglies seem pretty unkillable. <laughs> The gargoyles aren't like demons or vampires. Certain magics are required to revert them to their natural state. I, I don't know the spell offhand, but if you can get out into the store and retrieve my copy of Bebo's compendium of Corbins and Stone Demon, I, I should be able to figure it out. Great. It would have been much too easy if that was one of the books valuable enough to keep in here. There, sugar. <laughs> Come here. <all. laughs>
Bo's compendium. Better get this back to Giles. Here you go, Giles. One copy of Bilbo's Compendium of Gorthings and Stone Whatchamacallits. Thank you, Buffy. Now, let me see. Um, ah, gargoyles are susceptible to gorgon venom. A steak dipped in the venom should be sufficient to dispatch them. There are some in the shop that make absolutely sure you use the right venom. Use the wrong one, and they'll become so powerful that you'll never defeat them. All I know about the venom is that it reacts strongly to anything of gargoyle origin. Maybe you'll find something in the shop to help you. she wrote. Could be Gorgon Venom, but I can't chance it. I'll need to find some way to make sure. Okay, fireworks. This must be Gorgon Venom. Time to kick some gargoyle ass.
Buffy, you have the stakes. Excellent. Destroy the gargoyles. Excellent work, Buffy. Now let's get out of here. what a girl needs. A nice long shaft. Wait, that didn't come out right. <laughs> Babe, what's shaken? What's shaken? Simple as that. Last time I saw you, you tried to take over my life. Went all body snatchers on me. Then there was the LA rampage. Now you break out of prison and I'm supposed to say what? Welcome home? I was thinking more along the lines of pull up a chair, grab a beer. But yeah, basically. We don't got a hug or nothing. Say what you want. I'm still a slayer. Bad as you might want to, you can't take that away. And the jailbreak? You just needed a breath of fresh air? Hell no, prison sucks. Shine a light on that revelation. But between fighting off the Butch sisters and trying not to rise to the guard's bait, I'm getting my head straight. Not loving it there, but it wasn't my idea to leave just now. 
Okay, so if the jailbreak wasn't just because you missed the stellar Sunnydale nightlife, what the hell are you doing here? Long story, Chica, but I got the answer man right here. Hello, Slayer. Oh, for... forget it. Look, I need to get Giles to the hospital. When you're done wailing on Witch Boy here, they can patch him up. Doctors now, answers later. <laughs>